Hello there, brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless each and every single one of you. It is Hunter's Point here with another video. I hope everybody watching is having a good Friday afternoon so far. I wanted to come on here and give you guys a two-article news update on some of the events that are currently transpiring in the geopolitical theater. First article is going to be discussing this new concept that has been floated around the past couple of months. It's called the Metaverse. And of course, it's a Facebook-related concept. And then the second article will be addressing the record hot temperatures being seen in Australia. So with that being said, this is your two-article world news update for the 14th of January, 2022. Let's get started here. Both articles, once again, are off of endtimeheadlines.org, as always. Let's get started here with this first article. Surveillance will follow us into the metaverse, and our bodies could be its new data source. Erin McDaniel joins her colleagues in the office about three days a week by popping on an Oculus headset from Facebook parent company Meta or clicking into a desktop application. She can maneuver through an exact replica of the brick-and-mortar Washington, D.C. office building her company left behind when it switched to remote work. McDonald is the CEO of Environments, an interior design-turned-software company building so-called immersive work experiences in virtual reality, and it's testing its own product. Five employees work in the virtual office, each with their own avatar that looks kind of like them. According to MSN, the company takes great care to make sure that employees' avatars resemble their human counterparts, but only to a point. If it's too lifelike, it starts to get creepy. If it's too abstract, then the whole thing starts to feel unprofessional, McDonald said. Employees marking work anniversaries have tiny celebratory icons above their avatars' heads, kind of like in the computer game The Sims. McDonald can walk over to an employee's virtual desk and check in at any time. Despite the ramped up opportunity for managerial oversight, she stated that no employees have objected any of the virtual concepts up to this present moment. Quote, I think there will be a merging of our physical and online personas, she said. Buzz from around the region shared that 3D virtual spaces that companies, including Meta, are pitching as the metaverse may only get louder from here. This year's CES was splattered with companies billing themselves as metaverse tech, with ideas ranging from virtual customer service representatives to a food delivery robot system controlled by real people watching from a perch in virtual reality. All are angling for space in an emerging industry spearheaded by tech giants, including Meta and Microsoft, both of which announced their own metaverse products in the past few months. Even Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates weighed in, saying he expects the metaverse to be a part of our workplaces sometime in the next three years. The Washington Post warns that virtual reality headsets can collect more data about us than traditional screens, which gives companies more opportunities to take and share that data for profiling and advertising. They could also give employees more ways to monitor our behavior and even perhaps our minds. There's little stopping the government from getting its hands on body-related data from VR tech, and there's little in place to protect us and our kids from unrestricted data gathering and psychological manipulation, according to digital right advocates and experts who have been following the industry, in many cases, for years. Digital rights advocacy group Electronic Frontier Foundation and the Extended Reality Safety Initiative, a nonprofit developing standards and advising lawmakers on safety in virtual reality, have raised the alarm on the privacy threats big tech is posing with its version of a metaverse, not just for employees, but for people and their children at home. In some respects, a 3D headset is not really any different than a 3D monitor, according to John Callis, a director of technology projects at EFF. But then there are other things being done that could be extraordinarily intrusive. And I think that is the main argument being had, is that with these new metaverse products, these new virtual reality headsets that are you know, way more technologically advanced than in times past, you never know what kind of information it's collecting on you, right? Like with our cell phones, it's no secret that many technological companies are using our phones to collect data on us so that they can 
psychologically manipulate us and create advertisements based off of our personal preferences. If that's happening with devices like our phones or our tablets or you know Amazon's Alexa, if you have that, just imagine what these virtual reality headsets are going to do, because this is a step beyond even what these other artificial intelligence-based devices have done in the past. This is a step above that. So it's like if you've seen what you know Google's products have done or Amazon's Alexa or you know devices like that, if you've seen what those devices have done, just imagine what these VR-capable devices are capable of doing. So that's something to keep in mind as we progress further into the dawn of this new era known as the artificial intelligence slash virtual reality era. That will conclude the first article. Now we are going to go ahead and read article number two, which is discussing record hot temperatures that are just going all throughout the nation of Australia. Australia just reached 123.26 degrees Fahrenheit, matching its highest temperature on record. Australia just recorded one of its hottest days on record, with a coastal town reaching a temperature the nation had not seen since 1960. CBS News stated that Onslow was 50.7 degrees Celsius, 123.26 degrees Fahrenheit, on Thursday, a temperature that was last recorded in South Australia's outback on January 2nd, 1960. According to the country's Bureau of Meteorology, since Australia is in the Southern Hemisphere, its summer is opposite of the Northern Hemisphere. So traditionally here, right, summer would obviously be from about June all the way to about September. And summer over there is from December 1st and ends February 28th, which is why Australia is now experiencing hot temperatures. Nobody over there, though, thought it would get this hot. Still, more than 123 degrees Fahrenheit is extremely hot. For comparison, the day before, the highest temperature recorded in the country was nearly 116 degrees Fahrenheit in Western Australia, 46.5 degrees Celsius. PHYS.org reported that Climate Council Research Director Dr. Martin Rice said the record was, quote, part of a long-term warming trend driven by the burning of coal, oil, and gas. Of course, he's pushing that climate change narrative. And, nope. Uh, that's all I have to say to that, right? He likes to blame it all on, on climate change. Oh, it's man-made climate change. Man-made climate change. Nope. That's all I could say in that regard. I'll be, all, I'll be here all day if I just start ranting on it, so I'm just going to keep moving forward. He said extreme temperatures were already having deadly catastrophic consequences in Australia. Heat waves are the silent killer in Australia. They cause more deaths than any other extreme weather event, he said. Australia has experienced a summer with bushfires in the country's west and deadly flooding on its eastern coast. Rice said that without a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, such record temperatures could become commonplace in Australia. I just, I can't help but laugh, right? They keep force-feeding you that climate change narrative. And, you know, what, I mean, what can you really expect from people like Dr. Martin Rice? Anyways, that will conclude your news update. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up eSword, which is my online digital Bible program. And we're going to read from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. And this is the gospel right here. This is how you're saved if you believe this in your heart. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That is the gospel, the good news, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. You are saved, sealed, and sanctified with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, the nanosecond that you have trusted in this gospel alone. Right, That is all you have to do, is place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with you or anything you could do, 
right? It's not about your ability to obey the law or follow the commandments or do good works or good deeds. It's all about whether you've trusted Christ alone as Savior or not. That's what it boils down to. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18 reads as this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That is what it comes down to, guys. It's all about whether you believed on Christ alone. He paid your sin debt in full as he shed his blood for you on that cross of Calvary. To tell his side, it is finished. That is what he proclaimed as he was breathing his last few earthly breaths. He did it for you. He did it so that you wouldn't have to worry about paying for your own sins. Because if we had to pay for our sins, the only way we'd be able to is by spending all of eternity in hell. Christ shed his precious purifying blood so that we wouldn't have to spend eternity separated from him. So I pray that if you're watching this video right now and you're a non-believer, I pray that you would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ right now for your salvation and eternal security. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed to you. Your next breath is not guaranteed to you. So if you have not made the decision to believe on Christ alone, I pray that you would do so now while you have the opportunity. Because Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God the Son, the second part of the Trinity. He died on the cross, shedding his precious purifying blood for the remission of all mankind's sins. That's past, present, and future sins. He did it for you. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving that he was dead. And he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures, for our justification and therefore our salvation. He paid the penalty for sin. It's that simple. I pray that you'd believe on Christ alone if you haven't. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We know that grace by definition is getting what we don't deserve, which God has offered to us as the free gift of salvation. And we accept and receive that free gift once and for all, past, present, and future, by faith alone in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. So I pray that you have not believed on the gospel of Christ alone for salvation, that you would do so. Because time is short, and you have no idea when your expiration date might be. All right, so that is where I'm going to leave you guys for this news update. I will see you all in the next video should the Lord Terry is coming. Otherwise, God bless you all. All right, take care.